Remington 740 project. I'm going to take the stain off of the old stock. I plan on doing that with uh, varnish and stain remover. And then I'm going to sand it after that. This is going to take many hours. Um, this is going to be the only film of that. I have got the Remington 740 stock here and it is um, not fully sanded. Um, all the varnish is off but I want to smooth it out more. Um, it did have a nick in the stock right here. I don't know if you guys can see that but I got rid of it for the most part. Um, yeah, I'm actually really happy on how this turned out. I need to do some further smoothing out but that's about it. My dog. Hi, buddy. On the handguard portion, um, I may do some stippling. I'm not sure. But uh, for sure, I am going to put on a Picatinny rail. Something like that. So then I can further add a bipod or anything like that. Because this gun does not have a sling mount of any sort. Um, so I'm going to make just a Picatinny rail just to put a single attachment on the bottom. Alright, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I have marked each halfway point on here. And I plan on lining that up with a Picatinny rail and it should give me exactly half. Okay guys, I have my line drawn. As you can see, it's a little bit off there and a little bit off there, so I'm calling it equal. Perfectly on this mark and perfectly on this mark. Can't really get any closer to the middle on that. Alright, so I have all the holes matching up with the line. Don't know if you guys can see that, but that looks pretty even to me. Okay, um, we have it up to the drill press and, uh, well, I'm gonna drill some holes. Okay, guys, um, I had one problem. <laughs> with the Picatinny rail, and that is that, um, it, one, I'm trying to put a flat surface on a round surface, so it's very hard. Plus, um, it's directly center of the handguard itself, but I found out when you put it on the gun, it's a little bit different. So, it wasn't, um, flat, it was crooked, it made the gun crooked, slightly. Now, what I did, is I got on my drill press, and I grabbed a mill bit, and I milled it down flat. And then um, I took a level and made sure it was level with this flat part of the receiver right here. Same levelness of the wood. And I used a little bit of super glue to test it out. And I put the bipod on it and it's perfectly fine now. So I want to put it on record that I did change it. Um, I did drill two holes that I just don't like. But they're going to be under this so it's not a cosmetic issue. Um, I might even use wood glue to fill those in, but right now, I'm going to drill this as is. I mean, it's perfectly level when I hold it on the bipod, so uh, it's going good. Okay, guys, what I'm doing is I'm drilled the first two holes, as you can see beautifully in the drill press, and um, the other two holes are not to be drilled because I'm going to actually uh, thread those up and um, put the Picatinny rail in and then drill those while the Picatinny rail is in. I just want to make a little note here, um, sanding the handguard, as you can see, that's uh, pretty white, um, and I flip it over, and it's a different shade. Um, I've taken all the varnish, varnish out of it, I've done three varnish removers on this, and I've sanded it. I mean, it's just what it is. One side's going to be a little bit darker than the other, I guess. Um, kind of curious to see how that'll turn out. I just want to make that a mental note. Alright guys, I have my screws in, um, all is well with this, um, I'm going to take it off now, and um, I'm going to sand this out, you can see it's got a little bit of imperfection there, but um, <laughs> I couldn't be happier, it's uh, perfectly level, I put it on the gun, it's fine, um, so I'm going to take it apart, and now it's left to varnishing. I just want to show you guys, um, I'm going to engrave my junior symbol on the bottom of this, um, and I'll show you what it turns out to be. Alrighty guys, um, just engraved my uh, junior symbol into the bottom of the stock. Um, I like how it turned out. There's one little area right there that I don't really like, but uh, you know, I can't, I can't argue about it. I like the way it turned out. It's nice and deep, and it's going to be there forever. <laughs> 
Now, I don't know if you guys can read that, but I'm working on a Remington 740, and it says 742 on the stock. I assume they fit all the same, and I don't know why they wouldn't work, but I'm just curious. Do you guys know why there's a 742 stock on my 740? Did they do this in factory? I have no idea. Okay, so um, clearly I have my junior symbol, but I've also been working on this for quite a long time. A little bit of uh, custom stippling there. My name is Adam, by the way, if you did not know. But uh, yeah, I did that with my engraver. Um, now I think I'm just going to wood stain. Alright, so I've sanded the stock, and um, I wonder, I want to put another coat on it, maybe, if the true oil, if the true oil doesn't look great on it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a dull color, but you never know what the true oil will bring out, so, I don't know. See what it does. Um, well, here's the butt plate, and I'm painting it, and it's going to be a gold color, if I can. Um, but right now I have primer on it, and it's good to go, as far as I know. Okay, guys, I'm, um... I put my second coat on and it looks a lot more red and beautiful. So uh, I dig it. I dig it a lot. Okay, so uh, I put some true oil on this. It's the first coat. I gotta wait about another hour till it dries. And um, the forehand or the forearm is over here. And I just put that on. As you can see, it's all shiny. And I want to do a second coat on that. Okay, I'm back this morning and I just put my second coat after buffing a little bit on the stock. And um, it's looking pretty good. Really liking how this is turning out. Okay, so we're almost done here. I have the Pinkerton rail. It is um, drying to its adhesive. Um, it's JB Weld. Say what you want, but... I can't drill through that and use wood screws, so uh, I don't really trust those tiny little screws. You get know what I'm saying? So I have a little bit of JB Weld in there. Um, then I'm painting that to a bronze color to match the butt stock, which is also a bronze color. Um, let's take a look here. It's all dark, but I like the way it turned out. It's Adam. Junior. Ugh. Alrighty. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the Tenacious D also. It's always awesome. Well, here it is. The finished product. Um, I do want to get a muzzle brake sometime in the future. But this is the Remington 740 and all of its finishness. Um, I have shot it quite a bit since uh, I finished it. I put about 30 rounds through it and it's doing just fine. And um, so there's the Picatinny rail I put on the bottom. Anyway, really uh, nothing too special. I really just sanded down the stock because this this stock was beat to hell. Um, but then I put my own, let's put her up here. I put my own name there. I don't know how well the lighting's getting that. My name is Adam. <laughs> um, then I am Adam Jr. So I put Jr. right there. Anyway, let's set the gun back down. I um, I wanted to change things up a bit. So instead of having these black, I made them a brass color. And I put three layers of uh, clear coat on those, so they should be good to go. I did the same exact thing with the butt plate. And the butt plate does not help with recoil at all. <laughs> but, you know, it's not too bad if you actually shoot properly. Um, and it is, for there's no, uh, so there's no confusion, it is a Remington Model 740. And this gun, from what I know, was made in 1957 after I looked at the ser uh, serial number. And it was one of many, but it was um, 
not produce much longer after that. And then they moved on to further models. But this thing runs flawlessly. I don't really see what people's problems are. Um, they say that the gun beats itself um, and it destroys itself with every trigger pull if you don't take care of it. Um, and I plan on taking care of this rifle a lot, um, cleaning it all the time, which is kind of a bear. But um, I plan on having this gun forever. It has my name on it. <laughs>